example of a chromosome spread from a human female to n equals 46 xx and the arrow points to the x chromosomes the 4c dna content here is 14 picogram so this individual we would say 2n equals 46xx because she's a female and the DNA content 4c equals 14 picograms of DNA. So this is a chromosome spread at metaphase. So how is this done? You usually collect living cells. They're usually cultured from blood. Culture the white blood cells for 48 to 72 hours. You disrupt the spindle, usually with a drug like colsimid. You swell the cells hypotonically. You rupture the cells and spread the chromosomes on a slide. You can actually stain the chromosomes, photograph them, cut out the images, and arrange the chromosomes by size. And when you do that, you can arrange the chromosomes into distinct groups. So we talk about the egg group, which is chromosomes 1, 2, and 3, the B group, chromosome 4 and 5, the C group, you can see the chromosomes in the C group, which also includes the X chromosome, the D group, the E group, the F group, and the G group. You'll note that the chromosomes are arranged by size and by position of the centromere. The D group chromosomes 13, 14, and 15, and the G group chromosomes 21 and 22 happen to be the chromosomes that in humans contain the nuclear or organizer regions, and we'll talk more about those later. So as we said, for a karyotype, you display the chromosomes by length, and you display the chromosomes by the position of the centromere. And we can talk about metacentric chromosomes, submetacentric chromosomes, acrocentric chromosomes, and telocentric chromosomes. Metacentric chromosomes, the centromere tends to be in the middle, and the arm lengths are about the same length. Submetacentric chromosomes, one arm is clearly longer than another arm, so the centromere is not in the middle. Acrocentrics, the centromere is near the end, so you've got a really small arm and then a long arm. Telocentric chromosomes, which don't exist in humans, but do exist in, for example, rodents, the centromere is right at the end of the chromosome, so there's only one arm. But again, this is not something to worry about in humans. So here's a metacentric chromosome with a long arm and a short arm. It's a little bit odd to call a long arm and a short arm with a metacentric chromosome. In a metacentric chromosome, we usually think of the arm lengths as being equal. But by tradition, one talks about a short arm that is the P arm, so-called petite arm, and the long arm, the Q arm. By convention, we represent the chromosomes with the short arm or the P arm on the top. Here's a submetacentric chromosome, clearly a short arm and a long arm, and an acrocentric chromosome with a much shorter arm and a longer arm. Now, oftentimes, you'll see a chromosomal locus. We, for example, say 18Q1.12. That's the locus for genes that cause colorectal cancer. We may say the P53 tumor suppressor gene is on the short arm of chromosome 17. We would designate that as 17P13.1. I'm not going to test you on these numbers right now. It's just to give you an example of how we would designate loci on chromosomes. Now let's get back to these acrocentric chromosomes. What's the significance of the satellite region on the acrocentric chromosomes? These satellites contain the ribosomal genes, the so-called nuclear or organizer regions. Chromosome banding can be useful to ID individual chromosomes and to find structural abnormalities on chromosomes. And we can use normal banding and high resolution chromosome banding. And some common chromosome banding techniques include Q bands, G bands, reverse bands, C bands, and NOR. 
bands. So Q bands are just staining the chromosomes with a stain called quinoquine mustard. G bands uses Geems as staining. A reverse bands is just a negative image of either Q or G bands. C bands is a stain specifically for the centromere regions of chromosomes. And the NOR banding is a staining specifically for the nuclear organizer regions on chromosomes. Here is a karyotype. Here is an ideogram. An ideogram is a schematic representation of the chromosomes, and it combines data from various banding techniques. Go back here, and you see in the karyotype, you see both pairs of the homologous chromosomes. In the ideogram, oftentimes, you're just representing one of the chromosomes, but these would be clearly chromosomes that have replicated their DNA, and they're metaphase chromosomes as they're prepared. The red arrows on chromosomes 13, 14, 15, 21, and 22 are highlighting the nuclear organizer regions. These are ideograms prepared from G and R banded karyotypes, and they're just some to give you some examples. There's nothing specific about the fact that I pick these. I just picked them to show you how chromosome banding is designated. Here is a much more complicated and it's just showing, for example, chromosome number one, and it's from the National Center of Bioinformatics from the National Institute of Health. And basically, chromosome banding for each human chromosome, it's very, very complex. And you can go to this database and you can find what genes are located on each chromosome band. This is not something you have to do for our course, but it just gives you a sense of how chromosome band is used to identify individual human chromosomes and where specific genes are located on each region of human chromosomes. You were studying a case in one of your other courses. Looking case. The child in question was 46XY with a derivative chromosome 18 showing a translocation between chromosome 1 and 18. Here showing the position of the translocation. Here would be the derivative chromosomes. Has a derivative chromosome, derivative chromosome. The fetus received a normal chromosome 1 from the father. A chromosome 1 from the mother, chromosome 18 from the mother, and this is the mother's ideogram in relation to these two chromosomes. The fetus is a partial trisomy for chromosome number 1. monitor chromosome rearrangements. You can pick up deletions, additions, or duplications, translocations. And basically, FISH uses label probes that hybridize to interphase nuclei or to chromosomes at pro-metaphase and metaphase. And so here's a FISH analysis to show an individual that's got a trisomy for chromosome 21. So the probe was for chromosome 21. And here you can see three fluorescent dots in an interphase nucleus. Here's a fluorescence in situ hybridization for telomere sequences. You can see the fluorescent dots at the ends of the chromosomes. Here's a fish analysis for the dystrophin genes. They're located on the short arm of the X chromosome. Here's a fluorescence in situ hybridization with two probes to monitor deletion of the elastin gene from one copy of chromosome 7. This would be characteristic of Williams syndrome. Here's an example highlighting chromosome 7 here and the other probe here, chromosome 7. Here is the probe to the elastin gene. It's on this chromosome 7 but missing from this chromosome 7. There happen to be more than 25 different genes from the long arm of chromosome chromosome 7 that can be deleted in individuals with Williams syndrome. Here I just show the chromosomal locus. I'm not going to ask you to remember it for an example. The chromosomal locus for the William gene deletion here would be at chromosome 7, the long arm at band 11.22.
three. Back to this case we talked about the misty white. Case here they were doing pre implantation genetic diagnosis of embryos. So the green probe is to the telomeres on the short arm of chromosome 18. So you can see the green probe here. The red probe is to the telomeres on the long arm of chromosome 18. So you can see the red probe here. These are blastomere biopsies of a 118 balanced translocation. There's an even number of probes. Here's blastomere biopsies from a 118 unbalanced translocation. There's an odd number of probe colors. Here you see three green and one red. Here two red, one green. We'll talk about the significance of balanced and unbalanced chromosome translocations in a later podcast, and this will help you to understand the significance of this case that you've looked at in another one of your courses.